Some years ago, I had an acquaintance who had allowed himself to become a compulsive user of alcohol. He drank before he had dinner, and he would have what he called a bracer before involving himself in major business decisions. During a routine physical examination one day, a doctor told him for the good of his health, he should break the drinking habit. When I asked him what he intended to do, he said, that's easy, I'll just change doctors. <laughs> Another acquaintance is a lovely, well-educated woman who has been a very heavy smoker. She now tells us of a few times she even woke her husband up in the middle of the night and insisted that he go to an all-night store to get her a package of cigarettes. This couple came in contact with the missionaries, believed their message, and joined the church. When she knew she had to quit smoking, she almost immediately threw off the chains of this habit and became free of tobacco addiction. As I have been rereading the Book of Mormon, following the counsel of President Ezra Taft Benson, our beloved prophet, I have been even more impressed with the counsel Father Lehi gave his family shortly before his death. He pleads with his sons with these words. Awake, my sons. Put on the armor of righteousness. Shake off the chains with which ye are bound. And come forth out of obscurity and raise from the dust. These words apply to us today. Who among us hasn't felt the chains of bad habits? These habits may have impeded our progress, made us forget who we are, may have destroyed our self-image, may have put our family life in jeopardy, and may have hindered our ability to serve our fellow men and our God. So many of us tend to say, this is the way I am. I can't change. I can't throw off the chains of habit. Lehi warned his sons to shake off the chains because he knew that chains restrict our mobility, growth, and happiness. They cause us to become confused and less able to be guided by God's Spirit. Lehi also reminded his sons that their new land should be a land of liberty unto them, wherefore they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it will be because of their iniquity. He could have said, if so, it shall be because ye have been bound down in the captivity of the chains of unrighteous living. Samuel Johnson wisely shared, the chains of habit are too small to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. This lady of whom I spoke was able to break the chains of a bad habit because she became committed to change. Some of the Lamanites under King Lamoni were able to break the chains of their iniquities of murder, indolence, and hatred when they were taught by Ammon. They became even more valiant than Nephi's because they became committed to righteousness. Righteous living is a shield, a protector, an insulation, a strength, a power, a joy, a Christ-like trait. Yes, living a life of righteousness is a chain-breaker. Many of us today are shackled by the restrictive chains of poor habits. We are bound by inferior self-images created by misconduct and indifference. We are chained by an unwillingness to change for the better. Any wonder in Nephi's day as it is today that God's pleas are awake, listen, procrastinate no longer, believe me, come back and seek the straight course. This catchy couplet fits so many of us. 
Procrastination is a silly thing. It only brings me sorrow, but I can change it any time. I think I will tomorrow. <laughs> Shaking the restricting chains requires action. They cannot be wished away. A declaration will never break chains. It requires commitment, self-discipline, and work. Chains weigh heavily on troubled hearts and souls. They relegate us to live lives of no purpose or light. They cause us to become confused and lose the spirit. We need to arise from the dust and enjoy the fresh air of righteousness. We need to move forward in patience, understanding, love, and never-ending commitments. Sometimes the chains of arrogance and domination cause priesthood bearers to lose their way and stumble. No man in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is worthy of his priesthood powers and blessings who makes unrighteous demands upon his wife or family. God forbid that any man would find satisfaction or comfort in exercising this type of domination. No power or influence can or ought to be maintained by virtue of the priesthood. Only by persuasion, by long-suffering, by gentleness and meekness, and by love unfeigned. Let me share some chains I have recently observed in the lives of some friends that are causing misdirection, family destruction, loss of self-respect, and sadness. I'm thinking of a young husband and father who is participating in drug usage. He stands to lose family, employment, personal pride, and his own life. His cries of, I'm hooked, tug at the soul. The use of cocaine and other drugs causes those involved to become totally chained to that addiction. Those peddling drugs not only provide chains for others, but shackle themselves with the weight of unrighteousness as well. To those not involved, avoid drugs in any form with all of your might. To those involved, seek help to remove the chains that will drag you down and smother. Drugs are not a quick fix. They are a quick exit through a door which too often swings only one way toward heartache and self-destruction. Believe me when I tell you some of the saddest sights of human beings I've ever witnessed in my life are people living with drug addiction. They are prisoners within their own bodies. Many are totally helpless, dependent, and desperate, but none is hopeless. Help lift those chains and fight back for personal dignity, peace, and purpose. Anyone who tells you drug use is the fun way is a liar. Any judge who allows convicted drug peddlers to go their ways with only light penalties isn't worthy of his office. I'm acquainted with a wife and mother who has changed security at the present time to a lifestyle of murmuring and criticism. She is the first to point out faults in her husband's or repeat neighborhood gossip. How damaging is a habit that permits fault finding, character assassination, and the sharing of a malicious rumor? Gossip and caustic comments often create chains of contention. These chains may appear to be very small, but what misery and woe they can cause. 
Oh, that ye would awake, awake from a deep sleep, yea, even from the sleep of hell, and shake off the awful chains by which you're bound, which are the chains which bind the children of men, that they are carried away captive down to the eternal gulf of misery and woe. Listen to the words of a friend who understands well the meaning of this scripture. A man who has been bound by the chains of indifference with God's help and by turning to righteous principles, those chains are not only being broken but smashed. This letter was received a few weeks ago. I was baptized into the church in 1974. At that time, I was employed in a job that required my having to work on Sundays. This, combined with a lack of strength in the gospel, prevented me from becoming an active faith and faithful member of the church. Over the years, I neglected my daily duty and prayers. Throughout this time in my life, I drifted farther and farther from the church and the teaching of the gospel. This neglect brought disappointment after disappointment to myself and my family. I was discouraged, disillusioned, and lacked self-respect and confidence. On the afternoon of April 6, 1986, my wife was scanning through the TV channels in search of something to pass away another lazy Sunday afternoon when she came across the Sunday afternoon session of General Conference about to begin. We decided to watch and see what was going on as we had lost complete contact with the church, and I frankly could not have told you who the prophet was at that time. As a gift from my Heavenly Father, I listened to a message that would turn my life around. The message followed me around the next couple of days. I commented to my wife how much better I felt about myself and my relationship with others as a result of simply applying some of the recommended principles. We have since returned to a faithful and active involvement in our ward." Close quote. What a blessing it is to rise from a dust and the change of indifference. One may ask, what must I do to break the change which bind me and lead me away from the path of our Savior and lead us so we cannot follow? These chains cannot be broken by those who live in lust and self-deceit. They can only be broken by people who are willing to change. We must face up to the hard realities of life that damaging chains are broken only by people of courage and commitment who are willing to struggle and weather the pain. It is true some people do not want to change even though they say they do. Only you can supply the motivation. Only you can decide to change. The church, the home, the family, friends, and those professionally trained can aid, support, encourage, empathize, and guide. But the work of change belongs to the person. Most often, it is plain, hard work. To change or break some of our chains, even in a small way, means to give up some behavior or habits that have been very important to us in the past. Generally, this is frightening. Change involves risks. How will people react and respond to me if I'm changed and I'm different? Even if our present way of life is painful and self-destructive, some of us think it serves a purpose, and so we become comfortable with it. Every worthy change means risk. The risk of losing an old and damaging habit for a new and improved way of life. If fear and an unwillingness to take the risk and challenge of a better way of life take the upper hand, 
we will not be able to change. Shakespeare in Measure for Measure says it this way, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we off might win by fearing to attempt, close quote. With God's help and strength, even the chains of fear can be broken by those who will humbly try. It can be done with this strengthening promise from the Doctrine and Covenants, section 122, verse 4, because of thy righteousness, thy God shall stand by thee forever and ever. A truly wise person will constantly move forward, striving for self-improvement, knowing that daily repentance is needed for progress. He will realize the good life is simply confirming to a standard of right and justice. The joys of happiness can only be realized by living lofty principles. Those who are committed to improvement break change by having the courage to try. Those who live without commitment mistakenly think it is easier to adapt their lifestyle to the weight and restrictions of change rather than put forth the effort to change. God help us to shake off and break the chains with which we are bound. With God's help, they can be shaken off by faith, works, prayer, constant commitment, and self-discipline. May we have the will and the strength to shake the chains that would control and destroy our progress, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.